All right, take us through these ratings. Okay, there is kind of a lot because uh, a lot. So I'm going to go uh, earliest or latest to earliest. But um, Raw was uh, first. This is last week's Raw, the one that did a giant number. Um, that was that did an 0.63, and it was first on cable uh, for the week, and it actually would have been um, fourth among all shows. It lost to three network shows, which were the Daytona 500 and the post Daytona 500, um, the post show, as well as a, a Lakers Suns game. So it beat every entertainment program on cable and network television. Um, SmackDown would have been, um, I believe, fifth. Um, do I have that? SmackDown was fifth for the week on network television. It actually did a lower number because it was the tape show, which still did, you know, 0.62, still a big number, but um, it was fifth for the week on network TV. Um, AW was... Um, 14th overall and third among entertainment shows. Uh, the only shows that beat it were Raw and Vanderpump Rules. Um, NXT was 30th, well, actually 66th. It was 30th among first run, but 66th if you include all the, the Big Bang Theory shows, which beat it. And uh, NXT from last night did 570,000 viewers in an 0.16, so very low numbers for NXT. Not any um great reason why that i can come up with it was um fifth in its time slot it uh you know had uh the usual competition um nba and vanderpump rules which is the biggest competition it was just down that's all there was to it raw was down and i'm surprised it's not lighting me on fire lately i'm not gonna lie what raw nxt yeah, I would. I, I, there's, there's, it's, it's, a lot it's of storylines not clicking. Tricks not there. Not a lot of big stars from the main roster. I mean, the Good they'd Brothers get, are there, but we're not. They had Gallows you know, and Becky Anderson, Lynch, but, no, and 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 uh, Ridge Holland, but yeah, they're not big stars. No. Um, yeah, I would say the same. Um, and it's not getting a lot of. I don't feel a lot of buzz for NXT right now. The um, Raw did one million seven hundred thirty-eight thousand viewers and zero point five seven, which is a lot lower than I expected, especially because they were coming off that, uh, you know, the um, elimination chamber. You know, you would have expected the number to go up, and um, you know, but whatever. It was. It still beat everything on television except for The Bachelor. Um, killed everything on cable, as as it will, unless there's a giant sports event from now until maybe eternity or until until uh, they go to netflix by the way before i get to that um the, at the they had the invest they had the investors call um and do i have my investors call notes here hold on um they had the investors call yesterday and um the key stuff um you know, it's a bunch of numbers and stuff, and I'm not going to go through it. The only stuff that, that, the thing that brought this up is that Raw will end on the USA Network the last week of September. It will debut on Netflix the first week of January. So we have three months where we don't know anything. And um, on the investor's call, it was brought up, you know, the three months. And the one thing that was very clear is they have no idea. They expect that it will be this somewhere. This was from day one. They were like, ah, we've got it. I mean, we will uh, we'll have something. We'll have something to announce. They told Still me nothing. Have, they told me they'd have something to announce relatively soon. And here we are with not only nothing to announce, but when they did their perspective for 2024, you know, as far as money and profits, their predictions were down, which is one of the reasons the stock was, was down. Their predictions for 2024 were lower than 2023, even with all the cost savings of firing people and all that, they expect less revenue and lower profits. Believe me, it's still profitable as hell, but lower profits this year than last year, which is very surprising because the TV numbers, the TV rights fees are up because in the United States, uh, three months of raw is about, you know, based on what the, the show was getting was, is, was, was getting this, this last year in 2023. 
you're talking like $70 million that's just out. And they may get something for those three months. Um, but right now, because they don't have anything in, in writing, anything that's done, they are projecting as if there is no money coming in for Raw during that three-month period, which is why, like I said, they're, expect, they're, they're projecting. They said that like they're going to make no projections about any kind of money. They have no idea. They don't know where it's going to be other than they believe that you will be able to get it somewhere. Um, and it's a, it's a hard deal to make because, like, yes, whoever gets it, if they put it on a television station, any television station, for three, the three months, you're, you're going to win the night, you know, with, with Raw, no matter what station you are. Um, unless it's access or something, you know, then you're not going to win, win the night. But, but if you're on any station that's cleared in 70 million homes, you're going to win the night. But who wants a show for three months that's just going to walk over to Netflix right away? It's like of no advantage to you in the long run. Certainly no advantage to pay $70 million or even $20 million for a show that you're not going to be able to keep. So it's a very interesting, that's a very interesting situation going on there. Well, so, a couple of things. Number one, when you think about Raw is leaving USA, SmackDown is going to USA, WWE and USA still have a relationship. I mean, they're taking SmackDown. Yeah. So the fact that Raw is not going to air for those three months on USA tells me SmackDown will be Monday nights. Could be. I mean, that's all to be determined. I know the last time I talked with somebody with WWE and on that discussion, they told me outright that, like, like nothing's official. I mean, the stations are going to have to all work this out in whenever. But the plan was, as of right now, which right now was, um, you know, I would say about a month, a month ago, I'm going to guess, is that SmackDown would be Friday. And I, I don't know how you would, why you would do that. I mean, if you're USA, it, it, it feels utterly stupid to do SmackDown on Friday. But that was the plan as of a month ago was for SmackDown to stay on Friday and be called Friday night. The other question is, why why can't Netflix just bump them three months early? They're probably not ready for it. They're probably I hope they're ready, ready by January then. Yeah, I know. I That's know. a three-month window. <clears throat> yeah. You know, the other thing, too, on that is um, Netflix, uh, basically the deal is is that outside of the United States, everything with WWE, like everything, is going on Netflix. Like whether it's UK, India will not be there year one, but India will be there as soon as the Sony deal ends. They're not going to like renegotiate India for like a big increase if you, they could get it like they did. I mean, they Netflix's deal is that like they get the UK, they get Canada, they get India, they get the whole world except for the United States, because before the Netflix deal was made, WWE had already made the USA deal and the um, CW deal. So they get, you know, Raw, SmackDown, NXT, pay-per-views, specials, documentaries. They get everything. WWE Network's being shut down completely. Um, so it's all Netflix um, for that. And it's actually uh, $5.2 billion, or a little under, just under $5.2 billion is the actual number for you know, everything. So um, um, that's, and, and they also have, if, if WWE was to add more programming, this is one of the things that came up yesterday was um, somebody asked, it was very, it was actually kind of, kind of funny in a way because the guy who asked the question didn't know what he was talking about. And the guys answering the question didn't know what he was talking about either. Um, but they didn't know anything. And he knew something, but didn't really know anything. And the man behind the curtain showed up, Nick Khan, who who was at the last call. He was there, but never said a word. So if something happened, um, you know, he would be there. Well, this time something happened. A guy asked a question, and he said, like, um, um, you know, what happens to NXT UK, and then what happens when it becomes NXT Europe? Like, where does it go? What's the deal? And Ari and Mark Shapiro um, had no idea what this guy was talking about. NXT UK, NXT Europe, they just didn't know. So so um, 
Nick Khan kind of jumped in. And I mean, the th he didn't know that NXT UK ceased to exist many months ago. But he did know it was going to it was going to become NXT Europe, which of course we were told when NXT UK ceased to exist that we would, you know, early last year, it was supposed to be first quarter of 2023, that they were going to bring back it, bring it back as NXT Europe, bigger and better. And I was always skeptical because it's like if you're bringing it back in a couple months, why'd you fire everybody? And um, the reason they did is now we are in the first part of 2024, and there's absolutely no date for NXT Europe. Um, I mean, I presume at some point there will be, but that it, you know, and they didn't seem to know. So, so Nikon basically didn't address that fact. You know, he didn't want to tell the guy that no, there is no NXT UK and we don't got a date for NXT Europe. He just said that the deal is, is if any added programming is done by WWE and they do have goals to have eventually have outposts in all over the world you know the same thing that they talked about for years you know Japanese and a Mexico and a Latin America and a you know Europe and a Middle East and they're you know trying to look at guys all over the world and having developmental programs in all these places that if they do TV with these groups that that TV, Netflix has the first rights to every one of those TV shows, but they don't have to take them. And if they don't take them, then WWE has the rights to sell them all over the world, locally, in those markets, in the United States, whatever, to another carrier. So that was one of the things that came up, as well as every little thing that The Rock owns. You know, he owns the, um, uh, what's it called, the um, intellectual property to not just The Rock, but every single thing from Rudy Poo to um, Brahma Bull to The Nation, anything that he has, you know, it doesn't matter, anything that he has ever done, you know, the deal was is he got $30 million and everything he's ever done. You know, Rocky Maivia, the blue chipper. He can be the blue, he owns the freaking blue chipper, which, I mean, good for him for making the deal, but he owns everything. So anyway, that's the the rock thing. So we're back with the um, the raw. I was surprised it was down coming off of a pay per view. Um, you know, there's no reason for it. The Cody Rhodes segment and uh, the Judgment Day Imperium face off was the big bump at nine o'clock. And nine o'clock has seemingly been the big bump period now. For whatever reason, people are trained that something big is going to happen at nine. They don't necessarily start watching at eight. So um, that was that. The um, uh, what was it? The um, the main event segment, which was the Cody and Paul Heyman thing, was one point six million, which is not too bad, really, um, considering you know considering what the show averaged and everything. It's probably better than the show's done a lot. Then um, uh, WWE Rivals, which was the Rock Triple H three hundred fifty one thousand zero point zero seven, uh, not particularly. Great, um, 12th in the time slot. Um, well, actually, 16th in the time slot. I'm sorry, 12th among the original, 16th overall. WWE biography on Randy Orton. Did you see that by any chance? I did not. I did not either. Um, I have not heard anyone tell me that I need to see it either, which I thought that they, you know, I was under the impression they did a really, that they were going to do a really good job on that one, but it was not something that I heard a lot of buzz on. Um, that was, um, 17th in the time slot, 377,000, 0.11. Collision, 386,000, 0.11. Similar number. Of course, that was um, the one thing, that, since this is becoming a pattern, um, it's every time there's a WWE pay-per-view, Saudi Arabia show, um, probably it's going to happen with the European show, this show, that's in the morning, um, a large part of the NXT, the AEW, the AEW Collision audience, they've had their fill of wrestling, and they don't watch the show. The um, Collision, this Collision was down 21% uh, from last week. The last time it was down 23% from last week, and, and more in 18 to 49s. Younger viewers are more, the older viewers are more apt to stay and watch their show. The younger viewers are not. If there's a big WWE show, they were down 29% uh, from the, um, not the week before, but the two weeks before because Collision was not on the week before. And they were down, the, the last time when they were down 
34%, um, you know, against the, the the day of the Crown Jewel show, which was also over long before collision, hours before. But uh, it's just, that's just the deal. Um, collision was seventh in the time slot. And then uh, Rampage, uh, 364,000, 0.11. Um, it was fifth in the time slot, um, and, uh, that was, that SmackDown, 2,272,000 viewers, 0.62. I mean, I expected that one to be down. It was a tape show. No Dwayne. Uh, this week coming up, uh, there is Dwayne. So, um, you know, I expect a, uh, and Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes, So I expect a big number uh, this coming Friday night. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the Join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click Join today and don't miss out.